Well, I won't do anything of the sort. Catherine, you sound familiar to me. Uh, yeah, I, I used to talk to you a lot. Right, under a different name. Cassie. Cassie? Yeah. You can check it out, though. It's true. It's not uh, made up or anything. Well, it's, yeah, but, but, I, I've, done, I've gone but, to a lot of but, trouble. Oh, to okay, find all right, Cassie, but you saying it's true is just one thing. It being true is uh, another. And, uh, you know, everything must be legal, decent, honest and true on this show. Cassie. It is Cassie. true. Cassie. All right. Stop saying that. Ca- I can't believe it. Cassie. It's been yeah. it's been ages. It has. I had a heart attack. Wow. And I'm completely blind now. Oh, God. So I can't do very much or get around anymore. Right. More so. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear from you. Huh. It was Cassie, everyone. Thanks for that, Cassie. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nicka at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello. This is absolute tosh. Thanks, Nige. You're the best. <laughs> Heather Wheeler. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, Blackpool and uh, where was the other place? Blackpool and um, Bournemouth, maybe? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, probably some other place beginning with B. God awful places, says uh, Tory MP Heather Wheeler, who represents the South Derbyshire. Of course, if she comes uh, from uh, South Derbyshire, then there's a person who knows a god awful place when she sees one. <laughs> She's an expert. Blackpool and Birmingham. <laughs> huh. Just slipped out by accident. Uh, Jason says, Bodger's replacement should be Michael Fabricant. Best man for the job. Vote man of the people. Michael Fabricant for MP. Or for a PM, rather. <laughs> hey, Michael. You don't need to put all of that product... In your hair. You just don't. You just don't. It looks like an upturned p- plate of pasta on the top of that man's head. Michael Fabricant. I've never seen a hair like it. If that is indeed what it is. I mean, it's either like congealed pasta or it's plastic. <laughs> I mean, what's going on there? I mean, I know it's it's his thing. Like Bodger's thing is to, you know, ruffle his hair before a public appearance. Make sure he's untucked just so. But Michael Fabricant, what's going on there? I mean, you know, curious minds are keen to find out. No idea. Ian emails, I saw £2.2.99p p a litre on the A50 on Thursday. What? 202.99p per litre. Uh, really? What, they're into hundredths of a penny now? Surely not. Plus 202. Don't forget that part. Where's this going to go? I mean, this is just unreal. It was £1.50-something a little while ago, and that seemed like a lot of money, didn't it? I mean, £1.40-something seemed like a lot of money. Now it's over two quid. Where's this going? Is there anybody in charge? Um, No, apparently not. They're too busy uh, making up stuff about sending people to Rwanda just to give their fans, uh, you know, a momentary uh, fillip. A moment, uh, like a little moment of giddy delight as they think about, uh, you know, other people's misery as opposed to their own. Other people are more miserable than me, they think. Peter emails, I put 50 litres of diesel in my car earlier and (laughs) doubled the car's value. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if I I put any petrol at all into my car, then uh, it would suddenly be worth something. Leatherhead, hello, Tim. Hi, Nick, how are you doing? Good, thanks. I've been listening to your um, calls about petrol prices and I was was driving down the A3 on my way home tonight. Mm. And, and there, uh, your caller was right. Petrol was one point nine 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 pounds a litre. God. But 
I've, I've actually worked out you were you having a debate about how you pay the point naught naught nine. Yeah, it, it's all actually it's it, it's obvious because what you do is you convert liters, and we can do it now. You convert liters into gallons, mm-hmm. and you end up with nine pounds eighty seven p a gallon. No. And if you convert that into old money, yeah. it's eight. It needs 12 shillings and sixpence halfpenny. What? How much? Eight guineas, 12 shillings and sixpence halfpenny. That's what it's all about. That's why we're moving back to, to imperial measurements, because it's, it, it allows you to charge 0.9 of a P a litre. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's an educational I, show, this, I, no? No. Completely, completely logical. Yeah. Well, um... Okay, it'd be the only thing on this show that has been logical, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let it pass. Thanks a lot, Tim. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Roger texts, there is no provision for tenths of a penny on the fuel pumps, so 1.99, no, pound ninety nine point nine would be rounded up to £2. Yeah, that's right. Which might not make any difference to us personally, but imagine all the people in the country all filling up their tanks about once a week, something like that. Tens of millions of of people all losing 0.1 of a P, which uh, added up would be, I've got no idea, uh, 86 pounds. 86 pounds, you believe that. Uh, Darby, hello, Brent. I mean, yeah, Brent. Hello. Yes, your name is Brent. Yes, yes, Brent. It is, yes. It is indeed. Well, last time I checked. Uh, there's a bit of an 80s theme with this. And uh, I'm, first of all, I'm a bit upset, actually, that somebody's decided to call my family's from the roughest end of County Down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not exactly fair, to be perfectly honest with you. But what is true is Sue Gray did run a pub yeah. in the countryside in a place called uh, Derelecki. So it wasn't Neary. So it's outside Neary. Right. And it was famous for lock-ins. But the way that was described earlier on, it sounded like the uh, the pub out of Rawhide, you know, with people throwing bottles and glasses. <laughs> 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 I got visions of the Blues Brothers and Rawhide being played. But yeah, she did. Now, ironically, it is a nursery now. The pubs are gone, and there's a nursery there, which is probably more apt when you consider the behaviour, what's going on. Well, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and then the second thing I'm going to say is, is uh, we're kind of living in the 80s again, because you've got Top Gun's the number one movie, mm. Kate Bush is back number one that's shorts, the Cold War's back in full swing, the Tories are selling off their greatest hits, the Council of Houses, and all we need now is some indus- mass industrial action. And, oh, yeah, we're, got, we're getting that, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, so, and then the third thing I want to say is Mad Max Fury Road, absolutely fantastic. But the first Mad Max movies were all about how precious petrol was. But things keep going the way they're going. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're not going to need to go to the cinema to see Mad Max Fury no. Road. It's going to get there. Exactly, yeah. It'll be uh, coming down uh, a road in Derby uh, near a location uh, near you. Oh, that, I screwed that sentence up, but uh, never mind. You know what I mean. Thanks a lot, Brent. Yeah. Mad Max coming to a location near you. Uh, Carolyn texts, snails have up to 20,000 teeth. I think I need gauntlets next time I pick a lettuce. 20,000 teeth. Where do they put them? In their little... Do snails have mouths? Uh, don't put up a picture of a snail's mouth. I'll do it now. No, don't do that. Chris says, ah, for the halcyon days of that first lockdown. Remember how hot it was? Yes, I do. I was, uh, I was uh, revelling in the memory with uh, Carol McGiffin just the other day. Yeah. Um, that that uh, revelling will be out on Monday. I've determined to call the podcast Fun with Candles. What? Fun with Candles. That's what's coming out on Monday with me and Carol McGiffin. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Oh, my God, he's... He, he, He's done it. That's a picture of a snail's mouth. That's like something out of the alien. That does look like the alien monster. Which mostly comes out at night. Mostly. Anyway, uh, Chris says, Ah, for the halcyon days of that... Can you please take that, that hideous thing off my screen? Ah, for the halcyon days of that first lockdown. Remember how hot it was? Yeah, I do. What a summer that was, weather-wise. By the way, have you seen Pistol, Danny Boar's drama about the Sex Pistols? Actually quite good. Rock and roll, says Chris. Rock and roll! No, I have not seen it. 
I would um, maybe like to, although those recreation things, I don't know. Because I, I, I feel that I would be sitting there thinking, well, that's not them. In much the same way as I didn't want to watch the Ian Dury one, because I know that I'd be sitting there thinking, that's not him. It's not him. Greenford, hello, Paul. Hello, Nick. Yeah, um, I think, uh, will a general election be called? Because I think the wet, the, 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 the Euro Remainers MPs nearly got him out at the no confidence vote. But... <laughs> the wets. <laughs> you mean p- people with a backbone, those people? Yeah. Um, but have you tried Primal Scream for that mixture in the 90s? They, they crossed rock with dance, but... Yeah, they did. Yeah, Andy Weatherall. Uh, yeah, well, was, Andy was Weatherall good, yeah. was the one that uh, that made them dance. I uh, think that they were rock, and then Andy Weatherall came along and did the. Uh, what do you want? Well, we just want to have a good time. That, and, that one. And, and, and do you like The Shining? Do you, do you like the Kubrick films? Talking about movies, do you like the Kubrick movies? Yeah, who doesn't? Mm. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Paul. Do you like the Kubrick movies? I do. Of course. <laughs> All right, well, on that uh, moment of rare agreement, we will, um, we will part. And we will go our separate ways. Bye-bye. Nice talking to you, Paul. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Mandy texts, please don't revert to us. It confuses me in Croydon. What does that mean? Us. It confuses me in Croydon. Do you know what that means? The way you say us. Yeah, but what's Croydon got to do with well, it? Well, she's in Croydon, isn't what's it? What's Croydon got to do, got to do with it? Sing! 0345 6060 text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk, and if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Thank you for holding. Your call is important to us. Uh, Your call is important to us, uh, but you have to make it before we put you on the air. 0345 6060 973. Al texts, best gig, Prince, of course, at Glasgow SECC any year. Um, No. I mean, an amazing front man, but I saw him live and it just went on a bit. Just you thought, oh, oh God, just get on with it. So it's a no from me, Al. James says the only Andy Williams track beginning whistling is called Whistling Away the Dark, he says. And he is not telling you the truth about that. Liar! No, it isn't. Nothing about wind, he says. But did I, did I miss, um, uh, miss, um... Misannounce. That's <laughs> not what I'm going for, but I'll have to uh, just use that. Did I misannounce that Andy Williams track by saying it was whistling in the wind? I know a lot about wind. I know a lot about wind. No, it was, it's not whistling away the dark either. It's whistling in the dark. He says, um, I'm very disappointed with you, Nick. It's obvious that unlike Bodge, you are not doing your best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I know. Can you imagine if this was my best? Whistling in the dark, Andy Williams. It was the first single I ever owned. And uh, on the B side, it was either that was the B side or, or the, well, the flip side was um, Home Loving Man. And anybody under the age of 30 is going, what's, what's the flip side, granddad? Granddad. It was that and uh, a four-track EP of the first four singles that the Beatles released. And I've still got that. I wonder if that's worth any money. Is it worth any money, honey? Uh, from memory, it was Please Please Me, uh, Love Love Me Do, you know, with all these uh, silly uh, boy band songs that they started out with before they went all... Uh, groovy. Before they went groovy. Uh, love Love Me Do, Please Please Me, From Me To You... And uh, A and other that I've forgotten. Can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, Freddie says, I work for the London Philharmonic Orchestra in the stage management department, so I'm often in the lorry transporting instruments. We stop to fill up a diesel at £1.99 a litre, and one tank costs (laughs) £750. £750. He said, best of all, the card machine packed up, so we had to travel back another day to pay... Using up the stuff. 
wait a minute. You had to go back. They let you off with 750 quid because their card machine had packed up. And they let you leave. So you went back using up the fuel to go back and pay for the fuel that you'd already... Right, okay, I get it. Wow. 750 pounds. Uh, huh. Maddie tweets, Fast and Furious is the greatest franchise ever. Greatest film in cinematic history. We're on Fast 9, says uh, Maddie. Well, the, the 9 part may be right. I don't know. Everything else uh, about that uh, tweet was incorrect. Not the uh, greatest franchise ever, and certainly not the greatest film in cinematic history, Maddie. Uh, you couldn't be more wrong. Jane says, forget action movies. I've just spent a couple of hours watching Nomad Land. Dreary from start to finish. Fabulous. I loved it. <laughs> What's Nomad Land? Does it have car chases and explosions in it? If not, count me out. Uh, Mark says, how dare you say that you don't like the first female Top Gun pilot? Isn't that a bit sexist? Shouldn't you be ashamed of yourself? <laughs> Was she a pilot? I guess so. Yeah, I suppose so, because they weren't uh, there weren't two people in each jet, were there? It was just the one person. You didn't actually see her flying. But mind you, any time anybody was in a cockpit, they had a helmet on, so you couldn't really see who it was. The amount of times that they did a close-up of somebody's squashed face inside a helmet, and you couldn't really tell who it was. Well, I couldn't, because you just saw them from the eyes up. And, um, you know, they'd call them by their name, but I can never remember anybody's name in a film or a book or a TV show which is an impediment to following uh, films and books and TV shows. But they do insist on, you know, b b like peppering you with people's names. After their first introduction, they don't feel the need to remind you who everybody is or not. And I can't keep up. I just can't. I'll put that down as my single and only failing. <laughs> Jakey tweets, did you see the footage from January the 6th? Horrifying. And the interview clips from Inner Circle members of Donnie. In my opinion, it just proves it was even worse than we all thought. Yeah, um, well, I didn't see the clips, and nor, after your uh, vivid description, do I think I want to, because, you know, that sort of stuff, once seen, can't unsee it. But um, one police person was saying he's slipping around in people's blood. So that whole thing about, um, oh, it's just, uh, you know, they're, they're just nice people who were... Uh, engaging in, uh, you know, the, their right to protest. Like Fat Donnie said, that's uh, not really the truth. I won't, But, you know, we can't handle the truth. Ewan says, I once had a flight from Shannon Airport delayed by six hours while John Travolta made an emergency landing. <laughs> that's a long emergency. Six hours? Why did it take him six hours to make an emergency landing? Uh, maybe he it was like a, a minute and a half to make the emergency landing and then he um, in, interpreted it, in, <laughs> interpreted uh, the emergency landing in the form of modern dance. Jez emails, it looks like the billions of pounds spent on the NHS test, track and trace system is finally proving useful. My doctors uh, rang me today. I've tested positive for the monkeypox. <laughs> well, prepare yourself because I'm afraid it's a listener with a material. It's, it's, shall I set it up? No. You want me to read it from the start again? He said, it looks like the billions of pounds spent on the NHS test and track and trace system is finally proving useful. My doctors just rang me today and I've tested positive for monkeypox. They asked me if I could swing by the surgery tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it's the test and trace uh, app, Bodge. Contract taste, contact tasting, t testing, tracing, forgive me, contract, contract, contact tracing. Oh, give it up, mate. You're never going to get it. Good one, though, Jez. I'll let that one pass. Ordinarily, I'm, uh, I'm a strict disciplinarian when it comes to listeners with material. John emails, being an actor in a Top Gun film isn't that hard to do stunts. Not like being a rocket Scientologist. Being, I'll, I'll read it as it's written, being a actor in a Top Gun film isn't that hard to do stunts. 
not like being a rocket Scientologist. <laughs> That's another. All right, okay. So I was my my I was taken off the punchline because the first part of the sentence was so clunky and awkward and didn't really make sense. But the, it's the rocket Scientologist part what's supposed to be funny. <laughs> I get you. Check your material before you hit send. James says, the leader of uh, Iron Maiden, Bruce Dickinson, is a 747 pilot. He flies the band around, uh, around the world when on tour. Yeah, that's right. But he's got the whole band and presumably all of their equipment in the plane. What does John Travolta need a 747 for? I mean, who's he got in the back of his plane? It just seems a bit weird. I mean, it is, it is like your, your little runaround car is a bus. Why would you need all that extra space behind you if you're going to be doing the driving? I mean, I get it if you're a passenger in a plane and you've got the kind of money that doesn't make no, never mind, whether, it's, uh, whether you've got a chauffeur or you know, a pilot or not. But if you're going to be up the front, then you're, you're stuck in a tiny little cockpit with this vast area you're lugging behind you. Don't make no sense. Um, let's have Streatham. Hello, Joy. Hello, Nick. Joy. Good morning. That is the quickest. That is the quickest you have picked up a phone. Yeah, well. I think you read my mind. Listen, <laughs> I miss, I'm serious. I miss, I love you doing, not just I, I'm sure most callers do. Doing, what's his name? Boris Johnson and Donald Trump. Yeah. I miss you doing Donald Trump because it's just one of the joys of life. Donald Trump is one of the joys of life. No. Oh, no, shut your up! Your version of yeah. it. Your version of it. Okay. Your interpretation of right. it. Right, okay. And your, just your comment to God and Donald Trump. Can you just give us a little bit more? No. Before the show is you over. Want, you want me to give you a little bit more uh, Donald Trump? Yes, please, because honestly... Just a just smidge. Like when Bro oh, when okay, Brian then. Ding come bong. bong! How's that, how's that suit? I think a bit more. <laughs> you, want, you want a little bit more quiet 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 like even you covering the whole mayhem january the 6th yeah just well, different your opinion of a donald trump he's we know he's been silent but anything regarding donald trump and bojo the board in me can put will put a smile on my face and other listeners a smile on your face. OK, well, that, that would be a, a beautiful thing to see, no doubt, to Joy. So um, hold your breath. It'll be coming to you uh, any moment now. Believe me. You do believe me, don't you? He said, scanning the screen for where it is. It's somewhere in here. Believe me, 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 okay? Believe me, 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 okay? 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Jim text The Navy did not allow Tom Cruise to fly the Navy jet fighter. He was in the PAX seat, so said the director. Well, um, I would be surprised if they allowed him to fly one of those jets because they cost hundreds of millions of pounds. But um, it looked like he was doing just that. At no point in that film did you think these are actors. They're in a studio being shaken about while pretending to fly a jet. It always looked like they were doing exactly that, that they were flying the jet on their own. I mean, there's, there's, the special effects were great. But um, the, apart from Tom Cruise's character, there was, well, wasn't really a single person in that film that you, that you wanted to um, survive it alive. <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, not the... It's probably not what they were going for. 0345 6060 You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. Twitter users need to do uh, at LBC. Uh, it's 12.30 on LBC. The news headlines with Alex Wallace. This is LBC. With Nick Abbott. A big sack of monkey nuts. Monkey nuts. You got the monkey pox? Get a big sack of monkey nuts. 
that's just good advice. I may have mentioned this about a dozen times on this show so far. Uh, Tom tweets, uh, Boris Johnson in 2011 wrote, When a regime's been in power too long, when it's fatally exhausted the patience of the people, and when oblivion finally beckons, you can rely on leaders of that regime to act solely in the interests of self-preservation, not in the interests of the electorate. Wrote Boris Johnson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Who says the quiet part out loud. We hear you, Bodge. We see you too. Mansfield. Hello, George. Hi, Nick. Enjoy the show. Thanks. Um, I'd like to bring people's attention. I know we can all have a bit of fun about all this, about the situation with Boris, but us in former mining areas and others do feel, really feel the, the effects of what really what's happening because... I mean, we've got. A, I mean, I deal with welfare rights around here, so we're, um, I've got my finger on the button, so to speak. And I don't know if you listeners know, but um, parents with children, if they're not over seven thousand four hundred, they can't claim free school meals. If they're not over what? If they don't earn over. Oh. If, if they're if they're over seven thousand four hundred pound. And I, don't, and I can't see really how, where, how anybody could survive bringing children up below £7,400. They cannot claim free school meals. Is that, uh, free school meal, Sorry. Is that true? That is true. And uh, what do you... Uh, on what do you base that assurance? Assurance on? No, well, it's fact. I mean, CPAG, Child Poverty Action Group, has actually compiled the report because they're... Um, I'm a member at CPAG, or our group's a member at CPAG, and and the intimating that the 30 percent of children that's actually living in, living in poverty, and yet there's only 25 percent, 25 percent of them can claim um, free school meals. So, yeah. so, so 25. Hang on, 7,400 pounds. 7,400 pound is the limit. Anything over that amount, obviously, you've got to have children. You cannot claim. Free school meals. Get, I mean, your you research officer obviously is digging this up somewhere, but to, um, yeah, that's factual. And the, that's, well, uh, that, that's incredible. The number of. Well, I would want to actually look that up for myself, but okay, I'll, just for um, amusement's sake, I'll believe you for the, the short term. But the number of children eligible for free school meals is now just under 2 million. So that's. Yeah. Well, if you read, if, if your if your um, uh, research can get up the Guardian today, right? I believe I believe there's a there's a report on it about it that are, um, about the effects of children who cannot claim free school meals. Because remember that over seven thousand four hundred pound a year. Uh, I mean, there's that gap between universal credit and uh, the CPAG is uh, arguing with the government about that, this, that everybody who's on universal credit with children should be eligible for preschool meals, which seems a sensible proposition. But to, um, yes, that's, that, that, that is the cut-off point. Right. Well, that's, that's, that, that's incredible. Yes, and I, I just bring it to attention because, you know, I mean, we can have a bit of fun about Boris and all that sort of thing, and, and I do enjoy it, right? <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's another side to all this. Yeah. And uh, it's the side that a lot of children out there actually are... Um, are actually suffering with families. I mean, I'm I'm from a mining, former mining areas, and I mean, whilst a lot of these, you know, people come on, they've, they've seen the benefits of booms, if you like, but we've never we, we've never had one of those. You see, because I mean, we've always been in a uh, recession, if you like, ever since the collieries closed, and we've right. got a lot of people around here who's, who are really on pittances and so on. And, uh, how's uh, that? Yeah. Uh, how's that whole leveling up thing going for you so far? Well, we've got to double whammy. We have. We've got Lee Anderson as an MP. And uh, um, uh, well, there's, there's a um, it's going remarkably well because basically we're having a new uh, um, we're having some new payments or sidewalks, what you want to call them, in our main town centre, but all the shops are shut. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so they're actually levelling the pavement, not levelling yeah. it up, but they're just levelling it. Yeah, just leveling it. Well, leveling the pavements, and uh, um, but the shops, but, but on the main street, the shops are shut, and what, what shops there are are charity shops. So, right, you know, so we're, um, you know, we are receiving the benefits of it up here. Yes, but except that there's no shops to, sh- <laughs> there's no shops to shop in. 
<laughs> so, but apart from that, sure. everything's going great. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we can talk, we can have walks around the old pit tips and remember the olden days, you know. <laughs> well, you can't possibly be yearning after the old days when people used to go and work underground in well, I've, terrible I've conditions. You, yeah, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, no, I've heard you, I've heard you mention this before, right? Yeah, but to, um, the th- the thing about it is the miners, the miners, the, the old pit villages were built built on communities. And they were built on the strength of one right. another's relationship with yeah. one another. It's just a shame that it, it it was built around that particular job. I mean, if it had been a better yeah. job, and then uh, you know a similar sort of sense of social cohesion could have grown up around, uh, like a factory, for instance, or you know something like that. Yeah. But not, um, but not because people get caught up in uh, you know the things used to be better, but they also used to be worse. Let's not think about uh, going back to mm-hmm. sending people down the pit again oh, oh no 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 but, but the relationships were made then pitch you know the, the you know the, the, the camaraderie the fun laughter and everything else like yeah. it, it would get it would get it and a lot of the older miners who yearn for that you know i mean it's not well they, yeah they, they yearn they might yearn for that like a, a more secure way of life um, you know knowing where you're going to work and when and who you're going to be working with but i'm I find it a bit hard to believe that people would yearn for actually going underground and hacking bits of coal uh, from a, uh, a face. Uh, that part I don't buy, but it is a- amazing, actually. I mean, it's just really quite alarming how many people in what is supposed to be one of the richest countries in the world are suffering in um, in what amounts to abject poverty. It's just astonishing, really. If only we hadn't suffered through the last 12 years of a Labour government under the uh, leadership of Jeremy Blooming Corbyn. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jeremy Corbyn. You see what you've done? Cheers, George. 0345 6060973. Yeah, put up that um, statistic again. Okay, I'll just get it. Yeah, it's just going to find it. It's just uh, really quite um, amazing, really. I mean, just astonishingly bad. How has it come to this with, um, you know, after 12 years of uh, a Conservative administration? It fair blows the mind, don't it? Where is it? I'm putting it there now. <laughs> well, quick as you like. This is, it's a live show. <laughs> Nearly one in three children in the northeast of England are receiving free school meals, according to figures that reveal a 10% rise across England as school leaders say the real level of child poverty is even higher than that. Figures released in the Department for Education, the annual school census, show that uh, almost a quarter of state school pupils are on free school meals, up from about a fifth last year, reflecting the increasing number of households receiving universal credit and earning less than 7400 a year after tax. I had no idea that that was the amount. How can you survive on £7,400 a year? Four years ago, 13.6% of children were on free school meals. That meant fewer than one in seven pupils were eligible. The current rate is one in (laughs) 4.4. You're doing a great job, Bodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where where, where do we... You keep it up. You're doing your best. That's what I heard over and over again. Hey, have you heard that Johnson in 2012 wrote... When a regime's been in power for too long, when it's finally exhausted the patience of the people, and when oblivion finally beckons, you can rely on the leaders of that regime to act solely in the interests of self-preservation and not in the interests of the electorate. (coughs) Sounds right to me. Um, Declan says, I agree with you about Fury Road. All action, no CGI. You must admire Charlize Theron for cutting her arm off for the role. (laughs) <laughs> that's right she is a trooper anything to be uh, to make it more realistic on screen Phil tweets I don't think I want to watch Mad Max Fury Road 2 if it is being directed by the Queen what experience does she have direction, directing action movies it's a no from me says Phil well that just makes sense uh, Queensland Steve hello Nick how you going mate good thanks 
That's the way. I, I figure you, you've had a lack of calls tonight, and I consider myself like the, the day shift, if you like. Everyone else has probably dropped off to sleep there in the UK, and right. you know, we're just waking up. So <laughs> We're fading out, and you're fading in. Exactly, that's right. Uh, a couple of things. One was um, I, I was listening earlier with the... Uh, the fact that you have to pay money in the UK to put air in your tyres at service or petrol stations, service yeah. stations, whatever you call them over there. You don't, you don't have that? By that? Really? Uh, well, I, I, I won't say no. I think I think probably the proper answer is going to be not yet is right. probably the case. If you guys are doing it, it'll probably happen here eventually. But no, not at the moment. No. Well, it's been this way for a long time here. I can't remember the last time I got free air. I mean, to the point that I did buy myself one of those machines that you stick in your cigar lighter in the car. And you can um, do your own, uh, you do your own tires. Yeah. Actually, I bought yeah, it. I bought stuff. it to, during the, uh, the the first coronavirus panic because <laughs> I didn't want to be ha- uh, going to a petrol station and touching the uh, the filling thing that uh, you know thousands of people had had their sticky hands on before me. Disgusting. <laughs> I just uh, thought <laughs> the smart cool. thing to do would be to get my own, so I did. And of all the things, that was the thing that you thought of to buy. <laughs> I and mean, then there's many things that we, we encounter, isn't there? Yeah. In the daily, you know, well, daily right. usage. Well, I used to in that in that first yeah. um, panic, I was doing this show with marigold gloves on. I know you were. I remember that. <laughs> and, and you can't. <laughs> sort of when I first discovered you, your show back yeah, then, you can't believe how much they make your hands sweat if you wear them for three hours straight. I mean, like you're. Your pools of water in the bottom of them. You you put your hands up up in the air and you've got like a t- trail of sweat dripping down your arm. Awful. But you know me, <laughs> I never complain. Stop whining. I was expecting to hear winching, whining and moaning. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be either or. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Um, you, you're talking about action movies too. Have you seen the movie Crank, uh, the Jason Statham movie? Is that the one where he, like, spoiler alert. Warning, warning. Is that the one where he's got to keep his heart rate above a certain amount or where he Correct. dies? Yes. yes. Very yes. good. Very good. That was that was just full on the whole way through. I absolutely love that mm. film. It was fantastic. Yeah, he was, and, and he, was my, in a, my, anyway, he was in a film where yeah. he um, parodied that character with Melissa McCarthy, I think that's her name, called, I think it's just called Spy, which is actually hilarious. Very good. So what spy, I'll have to look that one up. That yeah. might be another one that you'll you'll put me on to. You've put me on to many films. Oh. So that'll be another one for me to check out. Yeah. Um just just one other thing, just with the uh the uh challenge with uh Boris during the week with the uh, you know the leadership. Mm-hmm. In Australia we tend to what what I noticed like with how you do it was more vote was about the confidence in the leader. Yeah. When like, because we both work on the same system of government, yeah, we've just, you know, copied yours with a few little tweaks here and there. But the the one difference I see here is that when a when a leader's put up for challenge, there's always somebody else who is the person that you would otherwise be voting for. Whereas this just seemed to be a vote against the leader, but without actually knowing then who would then otherwise <laughs> fill the void if that was the case. Yeah. So does it make it a bit more difficult when you don't know, you, you know what you're voting against, but not what you're voting for? Right. Probably, yeah. It, it seemed the whole thing seemed a bit weird because if he, well, he did essentially lose because so many people voted against him. He he, he yeah. won, but he he also lost because history tells us recent history tells us if you uh, lose by um, that amount, or if you if you get that many of your own MPs to vote against you, then uh, you know time is up. Not according to um, not according to Jacob Reese Mogg though. He, oh. he thought that was a wonderful result compared yeah. to this, Theresa May. I couldn't help but hear that. That was <laughs> illuminating. Exactly. I didn't know anything. Yeah, when uh, when it was against Theresa May, uh, Smug said that um, the people have spoken and she must go. <laughs> and That's uh, because it's uh, a terrible result, I think it was. Yeah, and uh, because the same thing happened to Bodger, then uh, the the same rules do not apply to, uh, to correct Jacob Rich Snob. Yeah. Hey, what's the uh, what's the weather like in what's the weather like in uh, Brisbane there, Steve? Well, now you know it's actually we have been having very cold weather last night. Had the heater on full oh. bore. It's yeah, yeah, I know. Well, no, I say that, but I mean, with all that said, I mean it's probably like, actually, if you give me two seconds, I will tell you exactly what our forecast will be today. 
because um, basically we've had it extremely cold overnight. I think it was like two, I'd say about six degrees, I think. Wow. But, you know, I can't find it. No, but it'll be probably about 20 degrees as always during the day. But, you know, this is the way our standards in Brisbane here is, is cold. Cold. Definitely. Well, I'm glad yes. to hear it. <laughs> Some good news, finally. <phone rings> it's cold in Australia. Uh, thanks a lot, Steve. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running late. Running late now. 0345 6060 973. Chris texts. When I used to watch The Sopranos, I'd wonder how they could do all the criminal and immoral things they did. I was re-watching the show recently, and after Trump, Boris and Putin, I thought, yeah, fair enough, Tony. <laughs> Sign of the times. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's about time I watch that again. Again, again. I mean, can you watch a television series like five times all the way through, and it'd still be uh, you know, amusing and funny and scary and all of the rest of that? Probably, yeah, probably the only one that, uh, that that is true of. The Sopranos. Uh, John texts, speaking as an inhabitant of Blackpool, I can confirm that Heather Wheeler is at least half right. At least half right. Well, she said it was uh, an abomination. No, a god-awful place. So what do you mean by half right? Because she also said the same of uh, Birmingham. Do you mean that Birmingham is a god awful place, or that um, <laughs> I don't know? Let's uh, let's just park that there and move on. We'll never know. That's the problem with a text and a tweet and an email. You can't interrogate it. Can't ask it uh, follow up questions. So have to take it on face value. Carl texts. When I learnt to drive, petrol was eighty seven point seven p per liter. That was only fifteen years ago, and boy howdy. And boy howdy, does that, boy howdy does that seem cheap? I'm sure oldies were moaning about the prices even then. Well, you know oldies. Whinging and whining and moaning. 87.7p per litre. I am stunned. 0.7? Where did they get that from? I don't think they should be... Why are they allowed to do in tenths of a penny? Because nobody ever paid a tenth of a penny for anything. Impossible. There is no such. Uh, there is no such amount. Even if you're paying on credit card, they can't do uh, a tenth of a penny. They wouldn't know what to do with it. But I suspect that if you round it up, as they must do, then multiply that by all of the people that are filling all of their tanks, week after week after week, and they'll be coining it in huge amounts. I bet. Betcha, betcha, betcha. It's like the way that um, banks hang on to your money. Uh, before it appears in your account. It used to be days. And, of course, they, they did have the money. It's just that they were hanging on to it before they gave it back to you, give you your own money back. Because if, you, um, if it's just your money, then that didn't, you know, the, the interest on that doesn't make no, never mind. But put your money in with everybody else's money, and suddenly we've got millions of dollars. And the interest on that is huge. Uh, Richie texts, where are the snails when it's not raining? That's an excellent question, Richie. Hanging out with foxes, wherever they are. There are so many foxes now. I mean, they're everywhere. This year in particular, it just seems to be... I mean, I drive home and I will see at least 10 of them darting in front of the car before I get home. I mean, every night. It is about 10, something like that. And it used to be maybe three or four last couple of years. They have exploded. And they don't seem to be very hungry either. If we stupid humans stopped leaving food all about the place, then maybe there would be less of a problem, less of an issue. And they're getting so bold too. They just stand in the, uh, in the middle of the road going, oh yeah, <laughs> what are you looking at? Smart, though. They know when a car's coming to uh, get out of the way. Toot sweet. Ian says, I've never seen a Fast and Furious film, but if they're on number nine now, there's a great title opportunity next time. Fast 10, your seatbelt. 
Here is uh, St Helens. Hello, Val. Hi, Hon. Val. Are we on air now? Well, I am. <laughs> I think Donald Trump is off his box. Yes. I love Boris Johnson and I have faith in him. Do you? To do what? I just, with the war uh, in Ukraine, I think he's doing his very best there. <laughs> Are you kidding? No. You think that we should leave him alone? He's doing his best? Yes. Right. Have you ever heard that phrase before? No. Oh, you came up with that yourself? Leave him alone, okay. he's doing his best. No, I think he is, honestly. Right. I, I actually think he's doing his best as well, which is really alarming, considering how <laughs> abysmal he is at his job. Well, uh, I'm 75 years old. You are 75 years old. Yeah. You made it. <laughs> You're taking a mick now. No, me? No. On this show? I don't think so. But I felt that uh, an oath was <laughs> was on the way. Warning! Warning! So I'm u I'm using the instinct that I have honed over these past years to um, shut that conversation right down. But I certainly do appreciate the call, Val. <laughs> He's doing his. Is this you doing your best, Bodge? I I can't comment on that. I I I I blah 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 blah. blah, blah. I'll assume that the answer is yes. Alarmingly, yes, he is doing his best. This is it. This is it, people. This is all we can expect. Here we go, 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 OK. Yeah, except he's not going. That's the, uh, that's the problem part. Not going, staying exactly where he is. They haven't found a window large enough to defenestrate him. The search goes on. Uh, Kath texts, I'm going to see Steps next month in Hastings. I will give you a full report when I get home. No, that's OK. <laughs> no, don't put yourself out, Kath. I'll be just fine not knowing. But I do appreciate the thought. Thank you. I'll be back at 10 this evening on LBC. Um... Uh, and I'll start by reading out all the texts and the emails and so on that uh, poured in that I didn't, mind, uh, didn't manage to get around to this evening. Uh, Ian Payne will be here at four o'clock. But first, here is Clyde Ball. Thanks very much indeed. And coming up after one, so yes, Boris Johnson clings on and fights back, apparently, with so-called red meat policies. So we're going to look at some of those policies. Will they make a difference? Do these policies actually appeal to you? One in particular, the Rwanda policy, does that make sense or is it a bit of a gimmick? Also, housing, the right to buy and mortgages paid for by benefits. And does Boris Johnson have the ideas to tackle the cost of living crisis? We'll look at all of those so-called red meat policies, plus across to Washington, where the official hearing into the January the 6th Capitol riot has begun, with Trump accused of an attempted coup. That and more after the news on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at one o'clock. Prince Charles apparently thinks the UK's plans to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda are appalling. The claims are said to have been made in private. A spokesperson insists the prince remains politically neutral. Yesterday, a legal challenge against deporting migrants to the East African country was rejected. Graham McGregor from campaign group Detention Action says they'll try again next week. The judge himself is not ruling out the unlawfulness of this policy and he's not ruling out the, the riskiness of this policy, the danger that it may be putting people in. He's just saying it's not going to happen in the time that it takes to hear the full challenge. Detectives investigating the murder of a 15-year-old boy at a house in Manchester have made an arrest. The teenager's mother was also stabbed during the attack in Miles Platting on Thursday and remains in a stable condition. A 44-year-old man was detained in Kent last night and is believed to be known to the victims. Prime Minister Boris Johnson's ordered ministers to do everything in their power to secure the release of two Britons condemned to death for fighting Russian forces in a sham sentencing. 
Foreign Secretary Liz Truss has spoken with her Ukrainian counterpart to help secure the release of Aidan Aslin and Sean Pinner. Ukraine's ambassador to the UK has suggested negotiations for a possible prisoner swap with Moscow were underway. Ahead of the fifth anniversary of the Grenfell Tower fire, a decision still to be made on the future of the structure in West London, which remains covered in wrapping with the message forever in our hearts. A garden is currently one of the ideas, but no plans have been submitted. People living close by say they're living in the shadow of the tragedy, which killed 72 people. Donald Trump has claimed his daughter wasn't involved in looking at voting results after she rejected claims of fraud in the 2020 US election. The comments were made in the aftermath of a hearing examining the insurrection at the Capitol Hill on the 6th of January 2021. The House panel investigating the attack showed video testimony from former US Attorney General Bill Barr, who said he found no evidence to support such claims. cut back on their energy use because of rising prices. More people are spending less on food and non-essential travel. A chance of some heavy rain in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Elsewhere dry. Saturday will be warm and sunny in the southeast. Showers in central areas and the north. Highs of 21 degrees. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Alex Smith. See, 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 I'm Alex Smith.